Hello and welcome, I'm Will Stevenson. I've decided to do a series of videos about street luging. I'm a street luge racer, I've been riding now for about 15 years, I've been all over the world doing it and I absolutely love it. But what I want to do is I really want to get some more people into it. So I'm going to be going through some of the little pitfalls about street luging and also want to cover some coaching sessions and some tips and hints and hopefully get some more people into street luging. Throughout this series of videos, I'm going to be covering, starting off with just what is a street luge, and then I'm going to be going through braking techniques, pushing techniques, cornering, and some racing tactics and strategies that have worked for me over the years. What is street luging? Street luging is a cross between the Winter Olympic sport of ice luging and skateboarding, where riders lie on their backs and go feet first down hills. They're only using the power of gravity to get them down the hill, and speeds can easily reach over 110 kilometers per hour. And the only brakes on board are using your feet. A street luge board I describe as like a skateboard on steroids. So it's got big wheels, big trucks, and it's a lot, lot bigger and longer because you've got to lie down on it. Uh, historically, street luges used to have these uh, foot pegs coming right out the front where riders used to rest their feet on. They were known as booms. But from around about 2002, 2003, they started fading away. And now 90, 95% of riders are riding what is known as boomless luges. There are four main types of boomless luge. There's a tube frame, spine design, monocoque, and pan with droppers. Each have their own good points and bad points, but most riders these days are now on the pan with droppers design. The materials that these are made out of, uh, it can vary. There's composite out there, so using carbon fiber, carbon Kevlar, um, fiberglass, I've seen a few using that. But uh, mostly it's aluminium and steel. Breaking down the parts of the pan and dropper style of luge, we've got the main part in the middle. This is the pan. This is the part that you lie down on, and your butt goes towards the front here and then connected onto here with bolts that is the droppers so this is what actually drops the height of the pan down so that it's nice and low to the ground at the front you've got the handles which come along the side and around the front and then you've got the wheel guard as well the wheel guard is there to stop the riders legs dragging on the wheels and slowing you down and burning your leathers which I've done and at the back it's just open wheeled The trucks bolt onto the droppers and these are the parts that control your steering and also hold the wheels in place. For street luging I recommend to use reverse kingpin style of trucks over the traditional kingpin style of trucks because they're more stable, easier to set up and, uh, all, and they've always worked for me. I've never had any issues with them. So go for just a cast truck. The Randall trucks are really, really good. There's, uh, I've ridden them and they, they worked out fine for me. And if you click on the link in the description, it takes you to a video talking where I talk through the setting up of the trucks and wheels on a street luge board, and there'll be more detail in there about that. And that's a basic introduction to street luge and street luging. Over the next couple of months, I'll be covering a variety of different topics, so if there's anything you'd like to see in particular, then please comment below or send me a message, and I'll try and cover it the best I can. Until then, if you log on to Facebook and Instagram and follow me, that will be fantastic. I am Will Street Luger Stevenson on both platforms. Until next time, stay safe and see you on the hill.